five A's. This is all there is to selling. It's very, very simple. Attitude to be positive. Because what happens if you've got a negative attitude? Not going to work. Ask the right questions. Actively listen, which means when you finish the question, let them talk. Acknowledge what's been said. Okay, that's a really good point. Why is it important to acknowledge? Shows you're listening. Also, is a clutch. I'm going to show you why this all pulls together. Because it means you can control. So if someone asks you a question, what do you want to do? If I ask you a question, John, what do you want to do? Is that how you, is that, so if a customer asks you a question, so what are you going to do? So if a customer asks you a question, so what are you going to do? Okay. So if you answer a customer's question, who's in control? Ah, how can you do that, though? How are you going to do that, though? Okay. Not so easy, is it? So what about if I could show you a system, Hannah, where you could ask a question with a question, would that be good? Eh, see? Which, does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> what? Okay, what? A question. It's your whole, you have, that's your whole life. It's your whole life. You acknowledge what's said and then ask another question based on what's said. Now, how long have you got, when someone asks you a question, Van, how long have you got to answer it? No, in, if someone asks you a question in life, how long have you got to answer it? Micro. In, you haven't got long at all, have you? Thank you. Would you agree? Okay. This is true. This is true. No. Right. Do you know why you can't do it? Do you know why you can't do it, Lucinda? You're absolutely right. It's all about the matrix because you've been told to answer questions. You've been indoctrinated to answer questions. And bearing in mind that you guys are as close to being out of the matrix as it's possible without being in the matrix because you're salespeople. You are already part out. I'm just going to give you that nudge to get you out. Or should I say, I'm going to show you the way that it's up to you to take the red pill or blue pill. The thing is, the reason why I can handle questions thrown at me, and I'm so good as a public speaker, is because any question thrown at me, I can deal with. Any, as a salesperson, I don't care. No fear anymore. No worry, no concern about any scenario. Standing up in front of a whole bunch of strangers, but I can stand up and talk to you and say to you, right, throw me questions I can't know the answer to, and I can handle them all. Because when I ask you, I handle the question and then ask the question back, Poppy, what do you want to do when someone asks you a question? Because it's polite, isn't it, Ed? Oh, powerful. <laughs> Darth Ed, as he should be known. But even then, you had to think, didn't you? So, when someone asks you a question, you just want to answer. Here's a way of stopping. Now, I'm going to be asking some questions of you and I want you to use this phrase just as a begin if you're playing tennis and because Wimbledon's on and if you play tennis right if you if the ball came to you and you had a special racket that you press a button and when the ball comes to the racket it sticks to the racket and then you can walk over to wherever you want let it go and it goes off at the same speed that it came on would that be a pretty good tennis racket would that be make you probably be able to play almost up to professional level, if not beyond? Because it's the only way to just get to it. And then literally it's all over. Agreed? This is that tennis racket for salespeople. Okay? So, can you just all read out loud? Just say that phrase. <laughs> right, okay. Now, that's pretty simple. So from now on, when I ask a question, I want you to use this acknowledgement phrase and then use the red bit, which is actually the question of you answering a question with a question. Yeah? Like on the five. Okay? So is this going to be easy to do, Terry? So, Jamie, when I 
said to you all, what I'd like you to use is this exact phrase. And I asked Terry that. Were you surprised to hear that she used something completely different? So, um, Lucinda, having then really made it clear to both Jamie and Terry that all they have to do is go, okay, that's a good question. Can I ask you, were you surprised that they both, that Jamie then did it completely differently as well? Look, that's a good question. Can I ask you, are you sure you were right here? All right, okay, fantastic. But you see, the thing is, you were able to do that because what had you bought yourself? To what? To think. to think. And actually, that question that you... Can I ask you... The, the question probably came about there. It only came... Run the last second. But that's all you need. Because I've given you a second and a half. You have a half a second, if that, to answer a question. Someone got a watch. A stopwatch on them or something that they can... All right, ready? Okay. So in a second, someone's going to ask me a question, and I am going to acknowledge. And you see how long my acknowledgement lasts. And then once the question is asked, you just tell me how long it's been. Okay? So someone, right, all I want you to do is time it. From the moment someone's asked the question to when my, I want you to time the time it takes from them asking me the question to my response and finishing. Okay? All right, so somebody asked me a question. Okay, so you're going to ask me what I'm doing tonight. Now, that is a really good question because there's a bit of a situation occurring with a friend of mine who's going through some scenarios. Um, when we talk about where I'm going to go tonight, uh, I'm seeing this friend. I'm not really sure what we're going to do. In fact, we're going to go out. Where did you say you lived? Chislehurst. So where in Chislehurst, my friend doesn't live a million miles away, I don't know the area. Where's a good place to go in Chislehurst? Good boy. Okay, first stop, stop. 30. Yeah, but the point is, you can do, you can do five, I can do five minutes on this. I can do it unlimited. You cannot. That was good. Very good, because I wasn't expecting you to throw it back. Very good. I will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I, what did I use for my question? Thank you. So this is how ridiculously easy this is. Now, positive attitude, I can do this. Ask the right questions. And this is something you've got to learn as you go along, just to ask, to ask what the right questions are. There's a whole process that we do later there. We do big trainings for large companies where we give you the right questions. You can't do this all in one day. Actively listen. That means... Do you know what I mean by actively listening? Actively listening means listening to what they're saying, not thinking about what you're going to say next. And you don't need to, because when you acknowledge what's said, what you're going to do is you're going to confirm what they've said. Okay, so what you're saying is you're looking for a stag party, 15 people in Prague, you don't want to spend more than £100 a head. Is that correct? Who's in charge of the conversation? You are. Why? Because you're asking the questions. You've acknowledged and you've asked another question. Acknowledge what's been said. Ask another question based on what's said. So their question is, the, is your tool, guide, to ask the next question. You've used his, his question as your format. This is a completely different way of speaking that is obviously not going to be something you can learn overnight. How, do you ever get a situation where people say, oh, just send me some information or just send me an email? And how long is that, how much of your time does that take? Two minutes, how many phone calls could you take in that time? Do you have lots of phone calls coming or you make an hour or it's okay? You can spend ages going on, filling out emails and things like that, send me some information. Or just send me some information. It's a classic, leave me alone thing that salespeople get. I answer, it's just send me some information like this. Okay, I'll certainly send you some information. However, we've got such a wide range of things, I don't want to waste your time by sending you the wrong stuff. Would it be okay if I ask you a couple of questions so I can understand exactly what you're looking for, so I can send you the information that's right for you? Would that be okay? Good. 
So, this whole point about the sales clutch is it gives you time to think. So, if you can just put in, okay, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. You just come up with these things and you just slowly change your language so that you talk question and not answer. So, when a customer says to you, right, I want to ask you about boom, 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 that's no problem. I'm quite happy to help. Um, be my delight, my pleasure to help you. Um, so, let me ask you just very quickly you're asking me about what we can offer you. How many people can get some information so I can build something for you? Very easy to handle these situations. Before you know it, everybody is doing what you want them to do, not what they want to do. But they think they're in control, like the child, like the parent thinks they're in control of the child. And they go, oh, thanks. Do you know why I bought for you? Why is that? Do you trying to sell me? Now the biggest problem that I have in sales meetings, the biggest problem I have when I sit down with a new client, is not laughing about 30 seconds in. The biggest problem, not laughing out loud. Because this is how my sales meetings go. Thanks very much for letting me come to see you today. It's been you know, a pleasure, I really appreciate it. Um, before we start, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about your business and how it operates. Uh, just to see if what I am going to be offering is going to be of any use to you. Would that be okay? To which they say what? Always. Yes. To which I go, okay. So, the way I go, but at that point, I mustn't laugh. Because at that point, what's going to happen? He's going to do my thing. That he's going to buy. If A, they can afford me, and B, I want to work with them, or C, it's relevant. Not always relevant, but mostly it is. It's very easy if you know how to do it. Anyway, so let's finish this off because otherwise we will be here all day. Has it been useful? Yes. Have you got some tools to play with? Yes. Have you got the manuals to take away and read? Yes. Good. Yeah, I think the course has been really useful. Definitely. What's your favourite bit? Uh, I, know, I, I, like the, I know, I like the will. You know the, you know the whole sort of thing yeah. about how you talk to communicate with customers and the others that big long process thing. Good. Yes. Like, Excellent. Like that. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Good. <laughs> For the time you actually you came, <laughs> what did you think of the course? Right, so, would you like to give me your feedback on the course and if you've enjoyed it? What have you liked about it? Uh, the Matrix module. The Matrix module, why did you like that so much? Uh, under it's underestimated. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. You undergo, unaware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like a freer person. Excellent. It, 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 it just makes it made me understand myself better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and how I sell and how I approach people and how I question people. Yeah, makes you more confident. Do you think it's given you more confidence? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Uh, Jess, have you found it a useful course? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> Fantastic. That's what I like to see. Good. Um, Hannah and Poppy, what have you liked about the course? I think I'm going to mirror them. I think the Matrix is really good. It's really useful. The dining store. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Poppy, what was the name of the dinosaur? Fight and Flight. Fight and Flight. Yeah, what's the dinosaur called then? Problem with, oh, the name. Problem with the <laughs> okay, good. So let's go to the guys at uh, Lucinda. Sorry, I didn't need to leave you and okay. Sophie out there. <laughs> Sophie, you right there? Yeah. What did you like about the course? Oh, it's going to sound like everyone else, but I like the matrix. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And Lucinda, what yourself? I like the problem with source. is big fan. Right. Okay, guys. Well, what did you like about the course, Ed? 
I can say I've been to, I've been to quite a few trainings in my time, so I'm too old. And uh, <laughs> some are okay, some are this and that, but you're quite up there. Ah, thank you very much. Good. Romance. Okay. Romance indeed. Oh, all right. Okay, well, can I just say, just say to you all, thank you very, very much for giving your attention. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well done. Wizard of Oz, it's an anti-sales film. Why? Because people think salespeople are crooks, liars, cheats, and everything else. Now, at the beginning of The Wizard of Oz, it was in black and white, remember? The beginning of it? Now, she runs away because she thinks she's going to lose her dog. Because the woman says, I'll get the dog. She runs away and, oh, total, oh, total. And there's a storm coming. That he's going to kill her if she doesn't get to cover, right? Who does she meet on her walk? Tintin, the lion, the scarecrow. No, no, before, before she meets somebody. Oh, when it's in black and white still. When it's in black and white. He becomes Oz, but it's a travelling salesman. Now, the travelling salesman says to her, you've got to watch it because you suddenly, when you've seen all, when you've seen all this training, you're going to go, oh, he's so She's saying, she's running away. He says, what are you doing? Where are you going? Aren't there people who care for you? See that storm coming? Do you want to be in safety? What about if you go back to I'm sure they still love you? He asks her a series of questions and gets her to go, do you know what? He's right, I'll go with her. Saves her life. He's a salesman. Saves her life. Later on in the film, it turns out to be Oz. And what is Oz? A liar. Liar. Faker and lets people down because first of all he pretends to be the great and powerful Oz, but really he's the man behind the curtain. And then when he says, "Oh, I'm going to take you home," what does he do? Lets her down at the last minute. So what does Wizard of Oz tell you? Salespeople lie, lie let you down at the last minute, can't be relied upon. So thank you very much, L. Frank Baum, <laughs> for making it completely wrong. But really, he was the good guy. You know, it's bad how they turned around. It was all the farm hands with their stupid heart and their stupid straw <laughs> and their stupid lack of courage. They all get stuffed as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> never watch it the same. Never watch it the same. Particularly watch the first. That's why I don't like it. It's true. It's, it's up to you. It's not a great film. So it's an <laughs> evil. <laughs> great film is films like King Gary, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Yes. You're a big film buff, yeah. aren't you? I like films. I went, quite a few. I saw yeah, <laughs> Glengarry Glen Ross was in London in 2007 in, on the stage and Jonathan Price, who played one of the characters from the film, was playing Machine the Bee. And then for my birthday last year, I went to New York to see Al Pacino play that Machine the Bee. Not Ricky Roma. Yeah. Who played Ricky Roma? It's just a American character. Was he good live on stage? It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Sorry. But particularly it's from when you know all the lines and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that whole scene with put the coffee down. Coffee's for closers. <laughs> That isn't in the stage plan, it's only for the film. But I did, was doing a training for Lexus Nexus, and there were about 40 of them. And what happened was, I started off doing the training and I'm trying to do some motivation. It was in the morning, 8.30. Um, I've been working with clients for a long time. I'm trying to get them to get their heads right. And they were just going, I said, what are you here for? Why are you, why are you here? What's your purpose here? To sell stuff. What's your, why do you want to be here? To do what? Make money, right? That's how quick it should be. I must have done 10 of them. And why are you here? Why are they going? Good job. You know, and they weren't here to make commission, make money. I went, why are you here? I said, make money. Oh, make money. I just went. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you, I said, you, you, you. Yeah. And I went, 
and then this guy, I said, people come in, I said, you go home, you're fired. He said, you can't fire me. I said, Stuart, can I fire him? He said, go home, you're fired. Right? It was, there were temps, I remember. Temps, it was a proper, but it was, this is a major, big pit. I was so angry. I told them all, be here at eight. So when they walk in, wondering quarter to, quarter to nine, they go, he goes, it's all you to tell us all this. It was like he was hmm? feeding me lines. Who am I? What card you come into this? I walk. Just see this watch. It's worth more than your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, and I go yeah, yeah, and you, you are, you're wanting. I mean, all our lines come.